Greetings and welcome to the assessment briefing for the ePortfolio, your soon-to-be favourite assessment task that is worth 40% and due in the exam block. As always, with the assessment tasks, the supporting document is up on the Waddle site. The Word document has some very good detail. I'm going to talk to some of the general principles and ideas here. That Word document has the deep dive on the compulsory sections, on the marks breakdown, and particularly it has the marking criteria that explains the sense of what we're looking for. And I know that this particular task has been one of the more stress-inducing protocols, so we have a number of support elements. You will see that there is a link to the document, the Word document accompanying this. There'll be a link to the PowerPoint slides that are currently on the side of the screen beside me here. And this video, you're hopefully watching through Echo 360 or YouTube. Also, there is the forum thread. And this will be open for you to ask questions about expectations, to raise concerns, to talk about the project. I know that this project is one of the big ones and at 40% of the subject, it's very easy for it to become a bit of a monster at the end of the book. I'd like it to be the lovable furry old Grover, but if you want it to be the big scary monster, the final boss battle, well, co-creation of value says that you can provide that for yourself. You can make this out to be as hard as you want it to be, but equally, we've got a lot of supporting material here to make it a really fun, pleasant experience for you. It sits as the final task. It is the reflect and review on the experiences of the weeks from when you're watching this video through to the submission. It is about keeping you engaged in the course. It's about leaving open the opportunity so that when you create your e-marketing technology engagement analysis and you pick your project, give yourself a little narrow cast focus, a logical, rational, time sensitive way of handling the rest of the course then would be you go, I am using platform X. If it is not about platform X, I am not going to invest my time into it, which is why I built the portfolio and weighted it at 40 points is to give you a very rational reason to engage beyond your 20 mark e-technology performance review paper. At 40 marks, you're not going to just go and dismiss the portfolio out of hand. You're going to look at it and go, oh no, that's most of the subject in this one task. What is the task requiring? Now I know it makes it a bit stressful, which is why we want to break it down into a bit more of Here's what to do on a week by week basis so that when you get to the end, when you get to the write up at the end, you're well resourced, you're confident, and you're enjoying it. So the first thing you need to know and confirm is it will be due during the exam period. The dates are for all the assessment tasks that have a finite due date, I haven't committed them to the video because the last two years have had something go wrong during the semester. It's the wrap-up, it's the last thing, it's uh, culminative. It's the point of this is that by the time you hit the write-up period, you should be at a point where you've experienced the semester. But in terms of the submission, I get this question every season, and the answer is what you need it to be to convey the story you want, mindful of the fact that it's 40 points. So if you're looking at what we've done in the other two, uh, the other three tasks that are worth 20 points each, there is a sliding scale between some and many words, but also it's not an essay. What I am looking for is for you to find a way that helps you express it is your story told your way on the platform of my choosing. To that end, the ePortfolio site is going to be used. It is the mandatory compulsory feature and the portfolio site is god awful. It is terrible. I'm going to sell it up for you and give you a good positive expectation. It's ill fit for purpose and it's just dreadful to use. I want to explain something really important about this portfolio. In my approaching 30 years of e marketing experience, I have had to do several things that I want to put back into a training work integrated, life integrated approach. The first thing is that as a practitioner, I have routinely needed to write about statements for websites. I've needed to describe myself 
in terms of my change from point A to point B. I've needed to use these things for job applications, for grant applications, for prizes and awards, and I was never formally trained to do this as an undergraduate. So I find them to be much harder than they should be. If you train with me, I will train you to ensure that you are better than me. I know that reflection is vitally important. You need that skill, so I want you to have that skill, so I want to train you and give you the opportunity that I did not have. The second thing, I have worked with a wide range of dreadful software platforms. As recently as this year, currently, and now, I am using two platforms that I would not use by choice. I would never use an Umbraco installation for a web management system because it's got so many bugs and flaws that irritate me. But that is what our platform runs on. And as a result, because we run on the Umbraco framework, I have to use it and I have to make our platform work. Equally, I am not a fan of the cut down version of Moodle that we use for Wattle. And I really dislike Wattle. And I have said a lot of things up to and including saying those things to the creator of the Moodle platform and telling him why I think his platform's rubbish, but I still got to use it. The ePortfolio is in there to give you a mindset experiential training. This is not the best tool for the job, but it's the tool that you have at hand. It is the worst fit scenario in many respects, and it is what you have to use and not just have to use, but you want to embrace a mindset of it's not the tool I want it's the tool I have how do I make the best of it how do I bring that co-creation and I bring the heavy end of the co-creation from my side so that it does what I want it. and I want to give you that confidence in yourself and your skills that you will develop by doing by following one of the pathways that I have followed and that I see as a strength and a way a good way to learn. But as part of that, we're going to point you at the platform. We're going to say, this is the portfolio. You're using it. Management has come down from upon high and said, we want to see the following things. This is the platform you're going to use. Good luck, mates. It's due to go live in November. Uh, it is okay to self-reflect on the experience of using the portfolio. That's what we're looking for in the content is we want there to be a narrative, a story from a to A++. We want you to think about the narrative of who you are as an e-marketer when you begin, who you are as an e-marketer when you submit. There are details of the compulsory elements of the narrative in the Word doc, but effectively it's both the story of the semester's experience and the story of the transformation, how you've gone from who you are when you start to who you are when you... There's a number of self-evaluative tools that we'll make available to you, and I'll explain a couple in a moment. A big part of what I'm looking for as well, though, is a sense of consistency over the semester. Nearly 200 of these things now. So I know when you were blitzing it out the last weekend because it reads like my writing. I always blitz these things out at the end. I am not the best student on the planet. So I recognize game recognizes game and I respect it. But the same way, if you want to just buy a credit, then you can buy a credit with credit level effort. And the Word document will explain to you what a credit level effort looks like, because I also want you to embrace this portfolio as yours. I want there to be a sense of yourself, who you are as an e-marketer, an emerging e-marketer. Do it your way, art, style, narrative. There are compulsory elements you've got to have, like it's got to be on the e-portfolio platform and you've got to meet some of the minimum requirements. It's a presentation of yourself, your, your experience and your reflections. And to that end, you can drag in bits and bobs from the weekly reviews, from the forums, from conversations you have in the live events and the tutorials, parts and pieces from the Padlets. And the Padlet is the ePortfolio preparation tool. The reason we're using the Padlet is to give you a weekly experience in answering some prompt questions that can help you explore your experience. So you look at that Padlet and you look at those questions and one of the questions there is, what were just some observations along the way? What did you notice? What was, what was the experience? Getting you to be conscious, active, have a high involvement level for a high cognitive and emotive outcome, 
just making that hierarchy of effects model work for you and using involvement theory so that you are present in the now because involvement theory is dragging your conscious processing up and saying, hey, we gotta work on this, it's worth 40 points. So let's talk about one of your self-reflective tools, self-characterization sketches, really, really important. Its big thing is that it allows you to do a qualitative benchmark. Your first characterization sketch is about the who you are now, so do it really early. Because when you get to week 12, you're going to write a second narrative of who you are at that. And then one of your narrative pieces is that you've got these two elements of evidence. You've got a beginning and an ending. And then you get to talk about the transformative effect. If there was no transformation, that is as important to document as if there was significant. So if you come out the far end and go, yeah, who I was in week one, who I am in week 12, then you had a confirmative experience rather than a transformative experience. And both are valid. If you come out the other end going, yeah, didn't didn't learn anything new, didn't learn anything new about myself. Like, congratulations, you were as good as this course. Mate, awesome. That's the confirmation. The confirmation you're on the right path, you're doing stuff. That is as important a story to tell as it is if you come in and go, well, I didn't know a damn thing about this. And, Whoa, hey, you should see what I know now. Along the way, you will see that we use a lot of Word documents. We use a lot of experiential learning, the seminars. What is my project? How do I explain my project against this concept? But you'll see that there's a few additional things that we don't cover in the classroom. And there's quite often additional exercises beyond just the discussions on the forum or in the live event. And they are there to help you continue processing. And one of the questions that tends to float around the back end of the document, so how is the experience? Getting you to think about when you go through a workshop, after that workshop, how was that? What was that about? Asking yourself the question of how confident you were, putting the Padlet question up of what was the, what was the point you wanted further explained. We want to give you a chance to build up your notes, build up your backstory, build up all the elements, evidence, and pieces you need to be able to come in at the end and go, here is a structured narrative of this course experience. So one of the uh, ideas that I bring up, and I've used this myself and I quite like this as a framework, is time well saved, time well spent, time well wasted, and time well enjoyed. Sometimes it's not about the efficiency, sometimes it's about the enjoyment. Why I want you to do this is that being able to show what you've done, being able to say, hey, these are the processes and steps we went through, makes it easier for you to work in partnerships and bigger teams, for your projects to scale, for you to be able to hand off to do economies of scale. On your compulsory moves, one of the things that I want you to do is the narrative conclusion. I want you to think about what did you learn? What's the big thing you learned from this subject content-wise? Then what's the big thing you learned from this subject experience? And what changed? So this is why we do the two sketches, the start sketch and the finish sketch. What has changed about you start to finish? And if nothing has changed to the best of your view, then what was confirmed? All right, uh, submission process, I uh, mentioned this before, I'll mention it again many, many times. It's more complicated than it needs to be. You submit the ePortfolio through Wattle, you do not submit through ePortfolio. Now there's a couple of things. The ePortfolio is judged on a set of criteria, the criteria are detailed in the Word doc, but one of the things is that these are subjective evaluative guidelines. These are not headings. Please, please do not use them as headings. If you use them as headings, I will know you haven't read, you haven't listened, and I'll just give you a bad score. All right, marking criteria, um, a reminder, it's out of 40. It's up on, the details are in the Word doc. So please do read the Word document. So the last bit of advice on this is find your style. We are looking for that sense of self, that reflection, the explanation of your experience, the exposition of your story, the sense that you are there, that you have come to this assignment and gone, I am and this is my project. It should be an interesting experience. It is a long-term commitment. It's more than just one weekend in November. Work on it along the way, gather your notes, build up your portfolio along the way, get your experiences documented, make certain you're capturing the moment. And also, 
make use of the arts. You've got cameras, you've got Canva, you've got access to tools and technologies, you've got clip art libraries, you've got Flickr accounts. Heck, if you go through Envato and find something you like and you want to use, drop me a line and I'll go download it for you. Make it work. Make it yours. Do it your way. It's the last dance of co-creation in the subject where you go, this is my ePortfolio. So if you need to reach me, uh, the thread is going to be the best place to open questions. You can ask me some technical questions however you want to do that, but really, if you've got questions about what the expectations of the ePortfolio are, I will want I will respond to you in email if you send it to me directly, but then I will also make a public post about them. So there's no trying to sneak insider knowledge out of me. I will go and share. You ask me a good question, I will respect that. If you do it on the forums, you'll get participation and engagement for it. If you do it in an email, you'll just get an answer. And with that, it is the best of luck. Get out there and enjoy it and go play with that ePortfolio. I will see you later in semester.